Welcome back to A Filmography of One, the show where we talk about one-time directors who made great films. And uh, it's Banned Films Week, so today we gotta talk about a director whose one and only directorial outing got banned in several states across the U.S. A king among men. King Donovan. Yes, his first name really was King, and Prince's first name really was Prince. Weird world. Anyways, Donovan got his start in Hollywood as an actor, as many one-time directors do. However, unlike Gary Oldman or Charles Lawton, he was never particularly popular. His most well-known role was a side character in the original 1956 Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Mostly, he did walk-on roles for TV. In 1963, he was invited onto what would be one of the most controversial, groundbreaking comedy films of its time, Promises, Promises. The film comes chiefly from the mind of comedian Tommy Noonan, not to be confused with Tom Noonan, who stars in the film as Jeff Brooks, a bookish nerd married to Sandy Brooks, as played by Jane Mansfield. And I think we need to pause for a moment and talk about Jane Mansfield. Probably most of you know who she is, but in case you don't, here's a little introduction. In her time, Jane Mansfield was the classic American sex symbol. She went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marilyn Monroe as the sex icon of the 50s. Hell, in this film, Mansfield became the first mainstream star to go fully nude in a movie, a title that would have gone to Monroe for Something's Gotta Give if that film hadn't remained unfinished after Monroe's untimely passing in 1962. That left the gate wide open for Mansfield to make her mark on cinema history. Now, I don't want you to think Mansfield was just a Marilyn Monroe type. Mansfield was much wilder and much more interesting. But you'll have to do your own research on that one. So Noonan, who wrote the script along with one William Welch, decided he was going to play Jane Mansfield's husband. What a guy. And guess who else appears in this film? Why, it's Jane Mansfield's real husband, Mike Haggerty. And if it weren't confusing enough having someone play her husband opposite her real husband, the plot does not help. Jeff is trying to get his hot wife pregnant, so they decide to go on a cruise ship to see if that helps. There they meet Haggerty as King Banner. Hmm, I wonder where they got the name King from. King is there with his wife, Claire, and the two couples become fast friends. King and Sandy are both hot and sociable, and Jeff and Claire are both bookish nerds. And in a shocking turn of events, after a long night of drinking, Jeff wakes to find he might have slept with Claire, and King might have slept with Sandy. None of them can remember. But Jeff was on a male vitality pill, guaranteed to make a woman pregnant. Now Claire's pregnant, Sandy's pregnant, and no one knows who the fathers are. So, uh, the weird sexual free love story definitely did this movie no favors when it came to getting banned. But the real big problem was Jane Mansfield naked. And not just once. There's only about a minute or two of her topless, but they keep playing it over and over and over again. Now, I'm watching this in 2020, some of it might have been cut and reinserted later, but it does seem like an excessive amount of the same footage. There's also, like, a super obviously gay character. Like, it's the overly femme stereotype, but some of these lines, man. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not gonna have any children. I should hope not. You're not even married. Woof. Personally, I found the movie to be pretty funny. I could see how it wouldn't be everyone's thing, but I got a lot of laughs out of it. It opened to pretty lukewarm critical reception, so I guess I'm in a bit of a minority. It's got a 5.1 on IMDb, which isn't great. Roger Ebert even criticized the nudity, calling it an act of desperation, even though by today's standards, actresses getting topless is a pretty normal thing. But oh boy, it helped this movie. This movie did gangbusters anywhere it wasn't banned. It made Jane Mansfield one of the biggest box office attractions of 1963. As for Donovan, he did some TV directing gigs, but that was about it. He mostly went back to acting before passing away in 1987. Now, usually I'll say something like, oh, that's unfortunate, but... King Donovan barely did anything. This film is built on how funny the script and performances are. Donovan was just a director for hire. This is much more Tommy Noonan's movie than his. 
Of course, in the eyes of the public, this was Jane Mansfield's story. So, yeah, this was a group effort. Turns out, not every one-time director was some secret auteur. And so, King Donovan goes down as yet another director with a filmography of one. I'll see you next time.